Hey guys, it is Erin and welcome back to another Clipped Recreations video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get this look from Holland's music video, Loved You Better, with a little bit of an added twist. Today I'm going to be showing you how I do a boy beat for Scream. Holland speaks about how he and Milkshake Films, who are the producers of this video, really worked together to make a collaborative effort over how they were going to show the LGBT struggle, especially in places like Korea, where it's not as widely accepted or widely talked about as it is, say, here in Australia. And he talks a lot about how it's not just the LGBT struggle, but it's also a universal struggle of finding yourself and understanding who you are and what your place is in the world. It's supposed to be a video that really shows being comfortable with yourself and fully embracing every aspect. And I think the best way to do that with makeup is through a lighter coverage foundation. So if you don't know what a boy V is, it was first described by Beyonce's makeup artist as an anti-Instagram makeup look that highlights things like rosacea, acne, texture, and dark circles. So it's super light coverage and it works with pretty much any skin type and any skin tone because it's about embracing what you have. So once we've got our hair up and out of the way, we're going to moisturize. The weather is changing, so our skin is probably going insane, or at least I know mine is. Make sure you do the neck. What I love about this video is that it really uses makeup as a storytelling uh, element instead of just an aesthetic one. So, you know, we start off with that bruised, um, kind of battered person in the beginning, and then they form into this very beautiful, very uh, open and experimental person. And I think it's really exciting to see makeup used in that way instead of just like, oh, this is a pretty look. It's like, hey, let us tell a story. Let us show the inside on the outside. Ready to go. We're going to add in primer. Now I'm going to be using my old faithful trusty W7 because I think this is the best pore blurring and filling foundation out there. And I'm also going to add in a tiny, tiny little bit of Miss Ivy's color correcting from Astralis. I have a little bit of redness here and I'm going to be putting blush on in this look and I don't want it to look like it's that like e-girl full cheek to cheek look. Literally like two drops of it and just mixing those two together. You're going to take a BB cream or other lightweight CC cream, whatever you want and you're gonna use just a small like pea-sized amount of that on the back of your hand. When you're doing screen makeup, it's very different to everyday makeup because you have a lot of artificial lighting that you don't have in the everyday. And so you need to still have some form of coverage so that the person doesn't end up looking dead on screen. And it's also really helpful if you have time to do um, makeup tests with the lighting because I remember when I first started doing makeup for short film and music videos I had to do a bruise and I didn't realize that there was gonna be uh, overhead lighting as in like China ball lighting and I was doing this bruise look and one of the powders that I used unbeknownst to me had micro shimmers in it the micro shimmers in the powder when it hit the light reflected so the bruise was kind of like having a groove and I remember watching that on this big screen when I finished it and I was like oh my god so ever since then I've been super duper careful with making sure I know the lighting setups and making sure I know exactly what's going to be happening so now that you're one color we're going to go in with a concealer just to highlight just the under eyes the forehead and the chin just very very slightly let me get it out not you buddy i'm gonna be using my kryolan super color palettes i love the super colors because they're so light and they're so easily buildable and blendable and i'm literally just going to go in with it on my finger and just very lightly and then you're just going to blend that with your fingers you really don't want any coverage at all so you're going to really bring that out and down and the concealer is more to add dimension and shape. Again, when you're playing with lighting, you do need to sculpt. My setup versus what's actually shot in the video with Holland is his shooting at nighttime and he's shooting under very artificial lighting. So I'm shooting in a studio with several lights and several softboxes. So <laughs> a lot more balance and light field than he is. I think that's pretty okay. I'm just going to keep lightly blending this 
down till it's almost sheared out. The only shimmer that he really has is the natural highlight where the light hits just here on the cheek. So I'm gonna go in with a very light fluffy brush with my contour shade. You almost wanna use a bronzing technique for this. You don't really wanna use like a line. Shadow kind of finds shadow. So if you're using really heavy contour, it's gonna be really, really noticeable in the dark. And you can really only see with Holland when he turns a brief second, you can see this line of contour. You're really just trying to amplify what you already have. I have quite naturally pronounced cheekbones. So I'm really just very gently sculpting in underneath those. And then again, I'm going in with just a light peach. And I'm aiming more for the tops of my cheeks than bringing it kind of down. With Boy Beat, I don't ever really want to put uh, like what I call the Neapolitan, so I don't want to have like contour, blush, highlight. I want it to kind of be very, very light and very, very gentle and just gently sprinkle it onto the bridge of my nose and then just hit that Cupid's bow. You almost want it to really look like you're not wearing any makeup at all and not in the soft glam sense, in the like, oh, this person is literally not wearing any makeup. I wouldn't really recommend powdering everything unless obviously you're doing this for screen or something like that where you're gonna have to keep that continuity. But I like to use just a really light translucent powder. I'm just gonna be using this one from Astralis. And just pressing it under the eye. And then our final step for base is just blush. Now I know that the trick to blush is just when you start to feel like the next touch is going to be too much, stop there. And then just for fun's sake, I always think it's a little bit nice just to do like the quickest, lightest boom across the nose. And again, taking the same brush that you used for the powder, you're just going to buff that out. So now that you look virtually unchanged, but more suitable for camera, we're gonna move into the eyes and the eyebrows. So because I don't have eyebrows, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to create that straight across look that Holland has in this. If you have quite naturally thick brows, then you're in luck because essentially all you gotta do is the first part that I'm gonna do. If you have thinner brows, I'm gonna try and modify what I'm about to do to help you guys out. You're gonna take a clean spoolie and you're gonna take a little bit of hairspray, not spraying the camera. Just spray that, not dry, but let it not be soaking wet. And then you're gonna brush the hair almost in a like, against the grain kind of way. So after you've fluffed up your brows, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fill them in straight across. So you're not gonna try and put an arch or anything like that. You just want it to be if you have really thick eyebrows, you're pretty much fine. Just brush your hair up and then brush just across the top. You just wanna go straight across. If you have no eyebrows like me, you're gonna to wanna to draw them in, um, just removing any tip that bends down. I use black because I have black hair, but whatever floats your boat. The important thing to remember when you're adapting a look that's on a different face to yours is you don't have to make it match exactly. You're just trying to map out where your features best fit the look. But I'm pretty happy with that. I think the shape is very similar. Um, I might, I wouldn't have made them maybe as pointy as I've made these, but that's okay. We're gonna move on. All right, so the next bit we wanna do is we want to create the eye look. So what we're gonna do is first define the waterline and I'm going to be using just a brown eye pencil. You don't want to get this in your waterline, you want to get this just under the waterline, so where your lash line is, and just give that a nice blend out. So every time you want to blend, you just want to be blending in a upwards diagonal motion. And then once that is fully blended out, you're going to go in with either a dark movie sort of plum shadow or if you have a cream shadow that's what I'm going to be using just under that lash line and then you're going to smoke it out and when you got that Carol Baskin like underline you want to buff it out and then I'm not exactly 100% happy with the color payoff from just one coat so I'm going to go back in and do a second 
you really want it to be very light and gentle but still have the intensity of the color and what you want to do to define your crease is use any color that's like two maybe even three shades darker than your natural skin tone uh, in a mat and you're just gonna put that on over the crease and then taking a color in the same shade as your lid just to mattify and brighten last step on eyes is we're going to curl the lashes and apply mascara black lipstick kind of always scared me when i was starting out with makeup because it's very very intense and i'm assuming that's why holland's makeup artist has picked it because it's not at all a color that you can be natural or subtle about it's a very like boom in your face i'm wearing black lipstick yeah it used to freak me out a little bit but now that i've kind of become a bit more comfortable in myself and in my own self-expression with makeup i'm finding myself gravitating to it a lot more and more this is a really nice one this is from um nyx cosmetics it's just their black lip suede if you like me and you're not the most blessed when it comes to your lip volume you just want to overline but make sure that your cupid's bow is super defined now I'm going to shut up so that I can actually do this properly. And that is the gist of the makeup look done. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the reveal. Bye! So when it comes to the hair for this look, I don't have a short red wig, but I did recently get a mullet cut, so I'm just going to clip the underlaying layers of my hair to the back of my head and then use some hair putty to mess up the top front section. I know it's not exactly what Holland has, it's just a little bit of a more androgynous, boyish kind of take on the look. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any looks from a music video that you would like me to recreate, please leave them down below. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time, bye! Ooh, <laughs> I try not to inhale it, you don't want to get clown long. And so once you're, ooh, you have to be really careful with black lipstick, I always find that it gets everywhere on your teeth. Bye. My brows look cooked, but we're not going to worry about that.